When it comes to the soles of your cycling shoes, is stiffer better? I mean, manufacturers tell us yes, some scientific studies tell us yes, and it's probably something I've said in the past, but is there a measurable difference that can be easily tested? And I mean, does it actually matter unless you plan on racing the Tour de France? Let's find out. Our feet are pretty impressive. They contain 28 different bones and an array of tendons and muscles. But as impressive as our feet are, it's pretty much still a given that we have to wear shoes when we're cycling. Now, something that you might have noticed when you're looking at cycling shoes is that many of them have a stiffness index or rating written on them. This is to do with how stiff the cycling sole is. But what you need to consider is that there isn't an industry standard or unit of measurement for this. Therefore, a shoe rated a seven across different brands isn't necessarily gonna mean the same thing. But generally speaking, the higher the number, the stiffer the cycling shoe. Right, down you go. I've got three different shoes here in front of myself and Ollie, and each of them has a completely different type of sole. At this end of the scale, we've got a trainer with its foam and rubber sole, and this represents the most flexible of the shoes available to us today. And it's the type of shoe we might see a very casual rider, or maybe someone that's incredibly new to the sport of cycling using. And then here as our sort of mid-ground, middle-range option is a DMT WKR1. Yes, it's a winter shoe, but its sole is rigid and made of a nylon composite construction. But even though it's rigid, it still has a certain degree of flex to it. Now this represents a mid-range option or say a shoe that isn't exactly gonna break the bank. And then finally, we have the DMT KR0. Now this has a super stiff, super lightweight carbon fiber sole, which is incredibly rigid and has no amount of flex to it whatsoever. And this is comparable to all of the top spec shoes that are out there. Now, the reason I'm using the DMT shoes as our example today is because they're partners of the channel and help make videos like this possible. But all of the principles that we're discussing will apply to all of the different manufacturers out there. And this selection, I feel, represents the widest range of shoe flexibility that's out there from the most flexible up to, you know, some of the most stiff out there. The test I'm gonna conduct is three maximal five second sprints for each of the three different shoe types. I'm gonna use the same gear, the same setup, and keep as many of the variables consistent so that we can get consistent results. Although when I use my trainer, I am gonna use a flat pedal. I mean, come on, you can't expect me to use trainers and clipless pedals, that's it's just not even a thing. If you're thinking I could have got a slightly better flat pedal to use for this experiment, well, just don't judge me. These are a set that I stole off of Suggestion Boy's pub bike, but you know, they'll do the job. So the theory behind using a stiffer cycling shoe is to have a more efficient power transfer when you're driving the cranks down. And it means that less or none of your effort is wasted through the sole of the shoe flexing around the pedal. And it should, in theory, make you a little bit faster. Right, test one, I've got my trainers on. Three, two, one, I'm gonna count myself in and then I'm gonna do my sprints. Do you reckon anyone's ever had flat pedals on an FTL before? Right, let's do it. I know these are power meter pedals, but for this experiment, I'm recording the power using the kicker so that we've got a consistent measuring device. Right, on to the next test. Test two, the nylon shoe, our mid-range offering. Yes, this is a winter shoe, and yes, I am riding the indoor trainer. Don't judge me, it's all in the name of science. Right, let's get set up, ready for this next test. <sighs> test 
Test three, our final test, and this is the carbon fiber sold cycling shoe. The stiffest shoe on test. Let's get sorted. Now, I know some of you might be in the comments section already about to type, oh, this isn't a very fair test, they're not using the same pedals, but come on, I'm using flat pedals with the trainer and the clipless pedals with the specific cycling shoes because that's how you would normally do. You wouldn't use a trainer with a clipless pedal. It just wouldn't happen. So we're keeping it a fair test using the pedals that would be associated to those shoes. So let's run through the results. So first up, we have the trainer with the flat pedals. So out of our three sprints, we had 978 watts, 995, and 991, with an average of 988 watts across those three sprints. Moving on to the nylon sold shoe next, so nylon composite, this one is, we had 1,157 watts, 1,120, and then finally 1,127. So some fairly consistent sprint efforts there. And that gives us an average of 1,135 watts, which has a maximum power average of 147 watts more than the flexible trainer. Moving on to the carbon fiber sold cycling shoe next, the stiffest that we had here. Sprint one, 1,216 watts. Then we had 1,159, and then finally 1,202, with an average maximum power of 1,192 watts, which is 57 watts more than the nylon composite shoe. So maybe in this instance, cycling shoe stiffness or the stiffness of the sole isn't necessarily quite as important as you maybe first thought. But what if you don't really care about the stiffness of your cycling shoes? Well, thankfully, there's lots of other performance characteristics of your shoes that you can take into consideration when you're looking to choose a new set to buy. Things such as the breathability of the upper, the overall weight of the shoe, how secure the enclosure system holds your foot in place, and I guess, crucially, the level of comfort that that shoe offers you over a prolonged period of time. And I mean, those characteristics go on and on. There's lots of different things to consider, but maybe when I'm looking to choose what cycling shoe I use next, I might not consider the shoe sole stiffness as one of the most important characteristics. Oh, the great thing about all of this is that there are many mid-spec or mid-priced shoes which share a lot of the same features as what you'd find in a top spec shoe. The main difference is that you have a slightly heavier shoe, but crucially, it's at that slightly lower price point. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up. And I'm really keen to hear your thoughts on the stiffness of cycling shoes. So let me know in the comments section down below whether that's something you take into consideration when choosing your shoes or not. And well, if you did like this video, share it far and wide with all of your friends. And remember to subscribe to GCN Tech because it really helps support the channel. And click that bell icon to turn your notifications on. See you later.